Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. Today I'm at Broad Lane Leisure and I'm going to be reviewing this. It's the Swift Contiki Sport 560 Motorhome. This is the standard 560 version that I'm going to be reviewing, but it is also available in a 560L, which has a different lounge layout. And you can find more details about that on the Swift website, and I'll put a link in the description below. So the 560 motorhome, what do we need to know about it? Well, it is by the manufacturer Swift. It's seven meters and nine centimeters in length. It's 2.3 meters in width, and it's 2.8 meters in height. This motorhome is going to come standard on a three and a half tonne Fiat Ducato chassis, but you can upplate it from three and a half tonnes to 3,650 kilos if you want. On the three and a half tonne, obviously you can drive that on a standard B car license, which most of us will have. But if you do want to upplate to 3,650, you are going to need your C1 category on your driver's license. On the 350 as it comes, the payload is going to be just over 340 kilos, so not a very big payload, which is why I think a lot of people would probably go to the 3650 if they can. Price-wise, as we can see, it's just under £70,000 with some extras on it because this motorhome does start at just over £67,500. However, it is a very well-equipped motorhome. So as I say, Fiat Ducato chassis, it's going to come standard with a 2.3 litre Euro D engine and 140 brake horsepower. If you want, you can upgrade to 160 brake horsepower and you can have the nine speed automatic gearbox. So what we'll do is we'll have a closer look around it and see what we're going to get for our money. So let's have a look. So first of all, we're getting the Fiat cab and this is the black metallic paint, as you can see. And then we have the sweeping front. It is a coach built motorhome. Up on the roof, we're going to find a standard, a 100 watt solar panel and an aerial as well for watching television. We're going to make our way down the near side of the motorhome, first of all, and see the services that we're getting down here. So as we come down the 560, first of all, we have got our Fiat 16 inch alloy wheels. We then have the door for the passenger side. And this is where we're going to fill up with diesel. It has got a really good sized diesel tank, 90 litres, and then it's a 19 litre add blue. And that's all in there. As we move along, we're going to have a window looking into the lounge area. And then down here, we've got storage for our gas bottles. And this motorhome is going to take two 13 kilogram gas bottles. So that's a good amount of gas, particularly if you are someone that wants to go off grid or you're intending on heading to Europe. So plenty of space for our gas. If we look up above on the top of the motorhome, we can see the two lay Orminster wind out canopy and this wind out on this motorhome is three and a half meters in length and that's standard for the price that we're paying. The body of the motorhome it is what the white sides and the decals we've got the well-known swift uh, snakeskin effect and this is almost a burnt orange in color. We then get the habitation door it's a one-piece door and it does open out this way as you can see as opposed to moving back towards the motorhome. Internally, there is a blind in there for privacy. We then get the Dometic vents for the tower, fridge and freezer, and we'll see that when we go inside. And underneath, we've got an external gas point. I always like to see these great for barbecuing outdoors in the better weather. Above, we've got an LED awning light. And coming back, we've got a 230 volt plug socket. So this is ideal if you want to charge up any bikes outside or have an electric grill or watch television, anything like that. We've got a socket there. Next to it, unfortunately, I haven't got the key for this today, but if we open this up, we've got storage underneath the side bed, which we're going to see when we go inside. So this is probably where we're going to keep bits like our chairs and things like that. 
for when we're away on site. So that's the near side of the 560. We'll head around the back and see what we're getting there. So I'll see you in the back. So here we have the back of the Contiki Sport 560. It's a large one piece white back end. Up there, we've got our reversing camera, which is a great bit of safety equipment. We've also got rear parking sensors as well down below. You can see we've got the two lay uh, preparation for a bike carrier if you wanted to buy a bike carrier. And then we're badged up here with the Swift Contiki Sport and the 560. So that's the back end. It's a nice looking back end. I, I like, I do like the shape of the back of the Swifts. So there we go. That's the back end. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to make my way down the off side of the motorhome. So we'll make our way down. Now, as we come down, we're going to find our toilet cassette. So suggesting toilets in here. We've then got an external cold water shower point. So that's great if you're wanting to wash your shoes, your bikes, your pets, yourself, whatever you might want to do, cold water external shower point. Coming further down, now we're going to find here the hookup for the electric cable. So when you are on site with electric hookup, you'll be able to connect yourself up. We've got a window here into the habitation area. And then we've got some more storage here as well. And then what we find here, this is quite a nice feature because obviously this motorhome hasn't got a garage, but once you open this up, it slides out and it offers a tray storage area where you're going to be able to keep things like your electric hookup cable. So it's nice to just take it out of there and be able to hook up. We've got here an external vent for the Alder because this does have Alder wet central heating, which is one of my favorites, I must say. So we've got the vent for that there. This is our water fill point. So when you uh, arrive on site or before you set off and you want to fill up with some fresh water, we can fill up here. And we've also got the 12 volt here as well. So if you are using an Aquarol, you can use a 12 volt pump to pump water directly into your fresh water tank. The fresh water tank on the 560 is 90 litres, so that's a reasonable size. And the waste water tank is 68 litres. So there'll be plenty of water there for a few days if you're not on site and you're off grid. So that really finishes off the, um, the exterior of the Contiki Sport 560. We've well, also got our driver's door there. So what we'll do is we'll venture inside and see what we all want to see what we're getting in there. So come on, let's go inside. So here we are inside the 560 now. The Swift Contiki Sport is at the top end of the Swift motorhomes. So you are going to find quite a bit of refinement in here. So we've got the two chairs up front, they both swivel. They have a suede fabric and then a more hard wearing fabric for the base part of the seat. Up front in this uh, cab, we have got multifunctional steering wheel. This one's fitted with the automatic gearbox. We do have air conditioning in the cab here as well for when we're on the move. And for when we want privacy on site, we've got the Remis blinds on the side windows and the front window. So you'll be able to pull those closed on an evening for that privacy. The one thing the Swift has got is lights everywhere. There literally are little lights absolutely everywhere. So it's really well illuminated. Above me, there's the huge sweeping sunroof as well of the Swift, and that's bringing lots of light in. You can open that as well to get some fresh air in. So I do like that. Now, as I move into the lounge area, now, as I mentioned before, there is the 560L, which has a different layout. That has two bench seats here. So that might be something that you're interested in. That's got a few different changes on the actual weights of the motorhome. So it's worth having a look at that, but it does have the two seats. This one, this motorhome has a bench here and then it's got a two seater here. And this is a four berth motorhome and it will give you four travel seats. We've got the two at the front and then we've got two seat belts on these uh, seats here to carry your two passengers. We also find a nice table here 
and this will be this is removable because this area is going to convert into a double bed to give you the first of your, two of your four berths. Now also in this lounge area we can see a plate here and this is preparation for your television bracket. We've got a plug socket, a 12 volt and we've also got the aerial socket there so you're going to be able to set up TV there and sit there or there for watching the television on an evening. As well as watching the television, we're also going to find some Kenwood speakers and these are just above me here. So through the command system, which I'll show you in a bit, you're going to be able to listen to some music as well if you prefer the radio, which to be fair, I often do when I'm away. So that's sort of this, this area here. What we'll do next is we'll just have a look at the storage. So it's the same on both sides. We've got four lockers all together and we do have a shelf in these as well. So just obviously be mindful of your payload when you're filling cupboards though. So we've got some nice locker space. And then from here, what we'll do is we'll just move further back to have a look at this Swift command panel. So this is the Swift command panel as you come in through the door. So on this panel, if you've never used it before, you will operate literally everything. All your functions, your water pump, the awning light, lighting, power, water, heating, the air conditioning if you have that fitted, fridge and other settings. Now next to it, you'll also see the ALDA panel. That's for the ALDA wet central heating. Once you've got this set up, you'll actually just be able to control the heating um, off this one panel. You won't have to go into, into that. So that's all one system. Now the Contiki Sport also comes as standard with a tracker as well. You'll have to pay a subscription, but the tracker's fitted and that's a great bit of security as well. So that's that bit. What we'll do next is we'll move now into the kitchen area of the Contiki Sport. I do like the kitchen. I've had a good look around obviously before filming and there's a few things that I do like about this. Now, as you can see, it is a good space. It's an L shape. We'll start here, we get a good size sink, not overly deep, but it's a good size. We have a swivel tap and there's plenty of worktop space stretching back. And you've also got a little shelf here and the bonus being there's two plug sockets. So you could put a kettle, toaster, coffee machine on here and plug it in. Under here, we've got some nice lighting, just switch that on and off. And there's a splashback, which is well illuminated as well storage space now this is a nice cupboard and it's not too difficult to reach into obviously if you're small like me you may struggle just into that far corner but we've got a rack for our plates and we've got various bits and pieces in there as well including the truma solar panels going to feed in there next to those cupboards we're going to find a microwave the microwaves good size it's certainly got a great depth to it as microwaves go in motorhomes so yeah that's a nice feature the only thing you just have to be careful with is it is directly above the uh, gas and uh, electric hob so if you've got any pots or pans on the boil just be careful if you're reaching up there so if we open this up now this is a Thetford appliance. I do like Thetford appliances. We're going to get an electric plate, great on electric hookup. And then we've got three gas. So if you're not on electric, you can still use your hob. So that's a really nice um, hob there for cooking. And there's a little splashback just here as well for uh, making sure we don't make a mess all over our, our cupboard side there. So under the hob, we're going to find the gas grill and that's fairly good size and below it we've then got the gas oven with a couple of uh, shelves there as well and it's at a good height it's not too low down for taking things out of there and just under there we're going to find a, a little bit of storage as well you won't get much in there and it's a little bit low but it's storage nonetheless so that's nice and then we come round and we find our under cupboard storage um, so we'll open this up now within here we find our rack, our draining rack, so we put that there for when we've done our washing up. It's always, always makes me laugh with these Swifts, these are 
Oh, it's absolutely huge, but at least you get one, so that's good. And there's also a cover as well to go over. So within here, we're going to get a couple of shelves, as you can see. And then we have a cutlery drawer as well. And I quite like that. It's nicely set out for you. So it's just under there. So good use of space because you don't get the drawers as, uh, as some motorhomes do in this kitchen. So I'll just close that up. So that's this kitchen space, nice and practical, I must say. And then over on the near side is where we're going to find the tower fridge and freezer. So this part here, we've got a little bit of storage just above the fridge and freezer, which I can just open up there. And then we're going to get the Dometic tower fridge freezer. This is 133 litres of storage. We'll have little trays which we've got them here. This is obviously just a demonstrations model, so they've not been put out, but we'll have those there. There's a nice salad tray as well. So plenty of storage there for about a week shopping. So, and it does open on both sides as well. It's, uh, it's the dual opening one. And then just below it down here, now with the Alder wet central heating, we've also got a vent and it is switched on. It's blowing out some lovely warm air because the heating is on in here. So that's really nice as well. Just keeps the floor area warm with that circulating air. You can turn it off with a button there if you want. So that's nice. Um, if you're wondering about when you're cooking about your cooking smells, then just above me, we do have an extractor. So you can turn that on and now this will suck air out of the motorhome and it'll also draw fresher air in. So in summer, if it's a little bit warm and stuffy, you can turn that on to circulate air as well. So that's just above the kitchen area. Now, move, I'll just move back a little bit. First of all, now you'll have to excuse me, but there are some items of some cushions already in this, but this is going to be your wardrobe storage area. There is a rail and everything will hang in here. As I say, unfortunately, we do have a few bits in there today, so I can't clearly show it, but it gives you a good idea of some nice hanging space that you are going to get. It's got a really good um, length to it as well, so that's nice. I'll close that up. There is a privacy screen and that's just here on this side. So what we'll do is you just unhook it, slide it across and it'll catch on here. And that's going to separate the lounge area from your bedroom area very nicely. Now, I'll just move back a little bit further. So we're now sort of venturing into um, the, the bedroom area of the motorhome. And as well as the little wardrobe that I just showed you there, we have this really good size one. And I really like this. We've got a rail above. The aerial comes in here and we do find the Alder header tank, but we've got loads of hanging space and then these little shelves as well. So we're going to get plenty of our clothes and towels and things in here. So I do like that and it's, it's not too low down. You can get in there nicely as well. So yeah, really good little space that. So moving further back now, as we can see, here's the bed without meaning to sound too obvious, but here it is. It is a side bed. Some people call it a French bed. Some people call it a fixed bed, but this is your side fixed bed. Uh, it is on the near side of the motorhome because obviously the back of the motorhome is behind me. In terms of size, at its uh, longest point, it's six feet and three inches. And at its uh, largest width, it's four feet and two inches. So it's only quite a narrow bed but obviously there's always a compromise in a motorhome and at least you have got a fixed bed despite this motorhome only being seven meters and nine centimeters long you're still getting the fixed bed if one of you's a little bit shorter you're probably best on this side here because obviously it is a cutaway uh, mattress we do have lockers all the way around you are going to have to climb on the mattress um, to get to those lockers which excuse me a minute i'll just do that um, but as you can see, again, they've got a nice shelving unit in there. So you'll be able to put some clothes and bits and pieces in there. So they're perfectly usable. And one thing I do like, which I'll just climb across this way, is 
we have got blinds and as you can see with it's the concertina style now these blinds are the same all the way around the motorhome um, and I, I do I personally prefer these they're a much more of a softer a softer touch so we've got blinds and we've also got our fly screens as well and obviously this window does open so if it's warm you can let some air into your bedroom um, when you're sleeping now last but not least um, in the bedroom is the television point yes there is one just up here on this side we've got preparation for a bracket we've got a usb charger a 12 volt and we've got a plug socket so you are going to be able to put a television in this uh, bedroom space if you want to watch it on an evening and we've also got some nice little lamps and little shelves as well so yeah all good last but not least is the bathroom and shower room now this is an all-in-one and as you can see door opens up it does it does sort of buff butt against the mattress but as you go in there we see that we've got in the back corner a good size shower cubicle that is a good size indeed we have a Thetford swivel toilet there's a nice toilet roll holder there's some nice shelving and a cupboard for our toiletries and a good size sink with mirror so in terms of the use of space it's fairly good don't get me wrong if you're a larger person um, you may struggle a little bit in there so as I say, just to give you some idea of, of the size of it, um, obviously the toilet does swivel, so you'll be able to move that. There is room to use the basin. The tap swivels as well. There's places to hang towels, which is good. Um, vents, in terms of heating, the only thing I've noticed, just down on this side wall, there's two vents there. They're just starting to warm up now. This is probably the coldest place in this motorhome. And, and it might just be that it's taking a little while just for the air to circulate round, but this that's the only sort of thing I have noticed. But otherwise, we've got some nice storage there for, say, for toiletries. Not deep, uh, maybe about three inches there, but we do have a little bit of storage under the basin here, so you'll be able to get your toiletry bag in there and in terms of that shower space it is it is a good cubicle the only thing i have noticed again is just the space around this toilet which i'll just show you obviously you could swivel it a little bit more um but that's the only sort of point there where it's a little bit of a, of a nipping point we've got a really nice shower screen here um i'll just get that out it's got a lovely effect to it so there we go as you can see, it's got a nice effect to it. It is, it is glazed and it's got a, a wet look to it. So, yeah, quite like that. Um, but no, a, not a bad size shower cubicle, really. Certainly plenty of headroom as well. So what we'll do is we'll just bob back into the lounge and just have a quick summary. So there we have it, the Swift Contiki Sport 560. The benefits of this motorhome are obviously its length, it's only 7 metres 9 centimetres which makes it fairly compact and usable for touring around. Comes in at 3.5 tonnes so you can drive it on your B category licence unless you upplate it to 3650. Price wise is fairly top end there at just under £70,000 but it is a nicely finished motorhome. And hopefully today you've enjoyed just having a look around to give you an idea of what you're going to get on this 560. I do like it that it does offer this good size lounge and that nice fixed bed. The compromise on this one is going to be that bathroom space, but you are getting a tower fridge and freezer. You are getting a great size kitchen and you are getting Alder wet central heating. So it offers quite a good package if you can compromise on that bathroom space. So there we go. I'd just like to say thank you very much to Broad Lane Leisure who've let us come and film today. It is appreciated. And I'd just like to finish off by saying, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.